Pitsy Bond, Thrifty Rich. It's been a few weeks. So today we're going to do a what sold video, what sold on eBay, Poshmark, etc. And then when I'm done, I'm going to take a little snack break and come back and do a haul video of these clothing, this clothing and some hard goods that I have back there. Okay. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Again, I am Yvonne. This is the Yvonne Thrifty Rich channel. This is my eBay Poshmark reseller room and office and where I shoot videos related to Thrifty Rich and reselling on the secondary marketplaces. You know, I talk about everything from making money to saving money, resources, and sanity. Everything is in playlist. Um, this particular video, again, is going to be a what sold, the highlights of what sold recently in my eBay and Poshmark stores. And it will be in the playlist titled, What Sold. If you want to go thrifting with me, the playlist is titled Thrifting for Reset. I am a trusted member of the online reseller community as we have self-named ourselves um, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And so another playlist that I have is with some Instagram reseller friends and it's titled Generation 1099. We do that show once a month, every first Monday of the month. And so for June, that will be this Monday the 3rd, will be the first of the month. Probably already follow Julie Casa Chic, Kenneth Ivy Flipping Daily, Sell Quick, Ship Quick, Hugo and Tiffany. So for this month, we're actually going to host it on their channel. We're going to let Hugo and Tiffany host Generation 1099 show. So again, back on my channel, Yvonne Thrifty Rich, I have things in playlist. So if there are certain things that you're interested in, you can just watch the whole playlist or follow the playlist. We have things like dumpster diving I just started, although I'm not a big dumpster diver, but I do go to a couple of them to get some shipping supplies. And every once in a while I might peek around and find something interesting. Um, collabs, other resellers on YouTube that I've been on their show. Some good people like um, Jason T. Smith, Lindy Glenn, Wade's Ventures, Prof Sales with Jason and Karen, Texas Gal Treasures, Margaret, Thrifty Treasures, Tanya, and of course I'm on the panel of the Reseller Stew Show on Deb Pinching Pesos channel. Okay, let's put me down into the corner and we'll get started looking at the highlights of what sold for profit. So these just sold, thank goodness. I sold these twice. The first time they didn't quite fit her. She sent them back in fine condition and I just sold them again. So for 50, I took a best offer, 50 on those. This brand is similar to like Sorel, which is a good sale, right? Um, these are Canadian, so they're made, they're engineered really nicely, waterproof for that kind of weather, for that snow weather. So. You won't find as many as you might the Sorrells and I can't think of other brand names, but you know that category. But this is a lesser known brand. But when you do see them, trust them, they're a good sale. I think they are going back to Canada <laughs> where the wild things are. This was just a little tiny pillow I picked up, uh, but it was new with tags. Um, $20. It's, I know I try not to sell anything under $20. I want at least, I'd like to have at least a $20 profit because I've said this a million times. In my mind, it, it takes no less than half an hour of handling from sourcing to shipping out the door for every item. That's my rule of thumb. So I like to make at least $20 profit because I have some other licenses that would allow me to go out and make, you know, 40, 50, 60 dollars an hour if I choose. I would rather do this, yes, but I just, you know, try to keep the money right in my head to where I feel like it's worth it. But with that being said, you guys, if you follow me, you also know I break that rule quite often because I'm sentimental. Um, I'm an artist. I have artistic temperament. Some things are just beautiful. Some things I'm sentimental about and nostalgia. Some things I just can't let sit there and go to waste. I knew someone would like this. They collect this kind of thing from this, um, from this show. We battled back and forth. It was a friendly battle back and forth. I finally just said, okay, I give. 
and I let her have it for I think 15. <laughs> I'm just like, I give. She run, if you run it that bad, I know you're going to take care of it and give it a good home. So, okay. <laughs> I went ahead and sold that. I thought about donating it. I went ahead and put it up. It sold within, I think, 36 hours. I paid two or three dollars for that, and I took an offer of 30. So, that is my third item like that I've sold, sort of. I'm going to talk about that someday. Let's just do some highlights. This was beautiful. This, isn't that beautiful? Copper. Now, but well, like I said on Instagram, be careful with our copper. Not all copper is going to bring that kind of value. Now, this was a candelabra, five arm, and with perfect condition, clear lucite candlesticks. The five candlesticks alone were probably worth at least an easy 20 25 Okay, so that was the brand name on this. I think I took an offer of 50 The shipping was fine and actually was 12 something to ship. So that gave me a little buffer padding on the shipping cost for supplies and um, the, the fees because we get charged a little bit on shipping too, right? Um, I always pick up little Olympic stuff. There's where I break my $20 rule. Quick and easy, little tiny things in and out the door. That's where I break one of my rules. New with tag, has to be clean. Okay, this, you, some of you probably know this artist, Wyland. He does like this, the, the, a lot of dolphin and aquatic things and some art, some prints. This was one of his earlier pieces when he did a collab with Austin Studios. It's not the prettiest piece at all, but it's from 1999, Austin Studio, that era, that collab. I don't even know for sure what medium it was. It looked like some kind of bronze over plaster because it was a little chipped, but there are collectors, right? And so this person really wanted to add it to his collection. So that was like three or four dollars. And so I turned that into 32, 32, don't quote me, but somewhere around there. I don't intentionally try to mislead, but somewhere around there. Um, Britney Spears, I it was retro, not quite vintage because the 2019 to 2000, but getting there. So retro, of course, you know, um, Britney Spears is an icon in certain um, subcultures. So she is still adored and loved through all her roller coaster ride of a life. You know, none of us are perfect. Um, this was fun little tiny i want to say 112 but i'm not good at mini dollhouse speak there's different ratios or measurements that they use i think this was 112 but i didn't really say that because i wasn't sure and i didn't want to eye that of course and you know people take their stuff serious especially when we're talking about this kind of money but it was one, one of the hang bags at one of the thrift stores and just little tiny doll furniture these some of these little figurines are like not even an inch tall. I put them in a very clean plastic, not one of the um, egg carton, little quail egg carton, not one of the cardboard ones, a plastic one that I could clean and disinfect. So I put it, it was like this big and it had 18 slots. So I put all those little things in that and then taped it up. It, it was a little bit of a chore, but it was still worth it because I hand wrapped everything so that nothing would break. No little handles. You know, this is delicate stuff. But anyways, that little hang bag for about $3 got me 50-ish, 50-ish plus shipping. And I've already gotten great feedback. She loved it. So don't pass up these little bags of doll furniture. Take a second look. Yeah, Starbucks. Some Starbucks cups are still hanging in there, right? Okay, this one, I took a big leap and put it up for 90 I knew that was a little too high. Not overly high, but I'm pushing it for, for not being new with tags, of course. But I took an offer of 60 55 or 60 So that was still a good flip. This is the men's bathrobe. My husband recently um, tried to replace my 20-year-old bathrobe. I loved that bathrobe, and it's hard to find a good bathrobe that you love. That's a very personal item almost. So I think he finally got tired of looking at it and tried to find me something that I would like. And during that process, um, we realized, I realized, that good bathrobes are expensive. So I started taking more a, a more close look at the bathrobes in men's and women's. 
Um, I used to just breeze through the women's for vintage. But I started taking a closer look at even the men's. And so since I've done that, I've sold a Harley Davidson bathrobe, which is very hard to find. Even online, that's hard to find. For 80 on Poshmark. I showed you guys that, I think, on Instagram. And then this one, this Ralph Lauren Polo, Polo Ralph Lauren, for, I want to say 50 or 60 So neither one of them cost very much. I think that was like $4.99, 3 or $4, not much, okay, at the thrift store. Jan Sport, some Jan Sports better than others. Um, I thought this would be great. Look at that little retro photo print. That might have been my sentimentality. I'm like from 70s teenagers, so like photo print I just love. That might have just been me being too sentimental. But anyways, it did sell. I made a little bit of money. This was a crooked easy poster. It was $1.59 um, and retro, vintage. I tend to grab stuff like that too, even though it's a little bit below my profit margin, but it wasn't bad. Quick and easy. And, you know, some of these pieces are harder to find. Eric Cofone, Rotary Phone. This was fun. A few bucks, three or four bucks. I don't have a landline. You know, if you sell things, things like this, you might go read that listing where I talked about it because I don't have a landline. Who has a landline anymore? But Xfinity Comcast to have my bundle deal at a better price. They made me have a landline, even though I'm like, I don't want people calling me on a landline. I don't want that. But anyways, made me have one. I don't even have a phone plugged in. Anyways, I took this down and plugged it into the modem. Now, I did, did get a dial tone and whatnot, but you would have to have a an analog to digital converter to really confirm. So I did talk about that, and apparently it's fine. It works. It works all the way through, and I he loved it. So I think I paid two ninety nine for that. So watch it. That's really an old one. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. Style built. This is style built. If you go and look at this listing you'll see i always have good pictures never less than six pictures hardly ever i try to use all 12. <clears throat> if you look underneath it'll say style built okay and this has a the glass wand when you pull it out it was about this big okay i got two of them this is the one that sold first the other one i'm still getting a few offers on this one's prettier but it's supposed to be like gold filigree wrapped, so I'm not sure about that, but that's what some of the other people say. I don't think I said that because I'm like, okay, if they if they're gonna buy this, they already know, if that's true, they already know that. Anyways, this sold pretty quickly for 50, but that's really interesting. It and like it just looks like an old Avon until you get close. You're like, well, that's pretty ornate for Avon. Let me take a closer look at this, okay? So that was a really those that was really a good deal. The other one will sell eventually. Apparently it's not as sought after style, or maybe there's more of them. I'll mark it down or eventually I'll take one of the offers that comes in, okay? Um finally sold one of these. I showed you guys that from a haul of a while back. I got lots of offers on that immediately, but they were too low because I bundled these together so I had to be careful because each one was like $1.99 or $2.99 so I needed to be careful you know so I would end up making some money after fees and everything I think I went ahead and took was it $60 and I had to get it there quickly they used them for a fundraiser fashion show for disabled children so I was worried I might get them back after the fashion show but they didn't do that I don't know if they let them keep the, the item or what but I've talked about this before. I try to stay a little bit out of mainstream when I shop for clothing because, you know, the anthropology and whatever, all that stuff that we typically can pick up, it's only selling, reselling for like, what, under 20 sometimes. It's just a little oversaturated. So I stick to having fun um, since I am part-time. This is my only source of income. I can have some fun with it. And I tend to go for the more unique pieces or solid classics, which we'll talk about here next. Solid classics. Um, and so there are different subcultures that I cater to. And so the reenactment in the Old West is one of them that I love. It's very faithful. So speaking of old classics, Pendleton. I'm easy on Pendleton. Only certain things. An Indian blanket blazer, for sure. Straight in the cart. 
This one, um, I, I did it because it has the um, leather, the suede patches here and on the yoke front and back. So there's probably a better name for that than, what, than how I did this, but it did sell, $58. I think I paid $4.99, $4.599. So it did sell. It's probably a better name for that kind of thing when it has the that little, it wasn't quite equestrian, but it's more collegiate, like old school, old money, college type, country club. Um, little tiny thing, a Fenton, it's Fenton, iridescent calendar cat. So not just a cat, okay, the calendar cat. Each necklace is uh, a different birth month. Just rhinestones, not gemstones, just rhinestones. But quick and easy, okay, just about this big. When you pick it up, you can tell. You don't even have to turn it over all the way to go, okay, this is not an imported trinket. You know, this is something because it's heavy. It's solid and heavy. I sold all of these. Do you guys remember on the haul video, I talked about the outlet mall that I went to. I bought six of these and six of the organic another one here i've got it over here in my poshmark closet let's switch over there real quick and i'll show you okay yes right here this one sold better the organic cotton because the organic cotton was another plus okay this was nice and thin so i sold these for more they were anywhere from 10 to 14 dollars a piece because i knew with tax but i knew they would sell well and i sold all of them mostly on Poshmark, even before the season hit. I was really, oh, by the way, there's that Harley Davidson um, men's, there they are. See, I just sold most all of them on Poshmark, even before the season lightened up. So that was pretty interesting to me. And just some other sales. Okay, we've already talked about that in a previous What Sold video, so I'm gonna get out of that and go back to here. Um, some things that just weren't selling, so I, I've been blowing them out just to use my free auctions and just to kind of mix it up in my eBay store, right? Some auction, because mostly I do buy it now with best offer. Now, sometimes I don't really want, I'm not going to take too low of a best offer, but the reason I always put best offer is because I try to use all the tools that eBay gives us, anything I think will help me you know, rank in the, in the search, which is also why I try to do all 12 pictures. Even if it's just one of my stock photos that says, be sure to read all measurements, you know, even if I just throw that in there, which is a good idea, by the way. Um, so, some, so sometimes I'll just try to blow things out on auction, okay, at least get some of my money back. So that's what happened there. That was my eBay open Vegas dress for last year. Um, I decided not to wear and sold that. So here's some more things just blowing out on, you know, the, um, sorry, auctions. Okay, so let's now go to another one. Okay. Now, if you watched Generation X last month, which was on my channel, I talked about, since we've switched over to Good Till Canceled, there's this thing that if you don't go check it about the out of stock, I made a post about it on Instagram, if you're confused. It's called Mystery Salt, and it's only a couple weeks old. So I can't remember offhand now, but you have to check or uncheck something. Otherwise, it's just going to keep our listings when we sell something as out of stock and it does not show up in our solds. Now again, if you go look at that, what I posted in, in Instagram, and I think I did go back to the Generation 1099 video show, show video and drop it down. I think I did make a comment about this. Um, there are several reasons why someone would want to keep that. A lot of people used it previous before it kicked in by default um, to purposely hide things from competitors, like things they don't, you know, that they kind of want to keep on the down low. Um, or maybe to they're going to get more in of that. They're going to restock that. They're going to replenish it. Um, they want to recycle that ad, even though they're going to change what it was, because they think it, that 
that listing might hold some back end relevancy. If you understand what I'm saying, like it might hold some relevancy and cause something to maybe get picked up more in search. You know, we just don't know about all these black op things for eBay, the algorithm. We just try lots of things that we think make sense in our head. If you know a little bit about programming and search engine optimization and things like that, we just kind of guess and think, well, this might work, you know, the same reason why we might use someone else's sell similar from the sold section not from current because we're like well it's already sold so it's got some history it's got some relevancy that maybe somewhere you know in the um canals or whatever canons of, of ebay algorithm you know that's noted somewhere that might help who knows okay so these are some anyways my point is these are some things that don't show up on my solds until i figured out why which I did, and then I checked or unchecked whatever I needed to so that all my solds would show up because um, I don't really sell high competitive items. And since I am on YouTube and I'm an eBay influencer with the Seller Diversity Advocate Program, I tell people you may go look at my store and my solds to kind of see if you like doing part-time and, and you kind of want to see some of the more unique and off the wall things that I sell and or if you watch the haul video and you want to go back and see what it sold for make sure I'm not like you know yanking your chain <laughs> so anyways here we go real quick through this this was $2.99 oh look that's right I'm doing it a different way this was $2.99 it's just a it comes off of a plaque a bigger sign I found out during my research but someone still wanted it, um, $48 worth of want. And I showed here that it works. And lots, just lots of good pictures. So of showing everything in detail. I wanted to show the plugin because it's an older plugin that wasn't grounded. So I wanted to be sure to show that too. Okay. So where are we at now? I sold a Mrs. Beasley. Yes. Some Mrs. Beasley dolls will sell for even way more than that. This one wasn't that old. This was a $2,000 Child Help USA campaign collabed with Cheryl Ladd. Um, if you're a millennial, you might not know Cheryl Ladd. She was one of Charlie's Angels. Oops. Who did she replace? Did she replace Farrah Fawcett? Love Farrah. Anyways, but, and she was missing her glasses. But she, other than that, she was in good condition, new with tags, her talking still worked. So $36 and she didn't cost very much. I, you know, I never hardly paid much for my things from the thrift store. Oh, ten, generation 1099 show. They helped me with this. I went ahead and listed it after that. It sold like within 36 hours. I've had it for a while. Um, but this is a inspired from Frank Frazetta. Of course, I can't say that in the title, right? Can't, I don't want to do that. Um, his death dealer that's pretty generic so I felt okay to use that you can't really say Frank Frazetta because it wasn't an actual reprint or copy um, or one of his paintings it was an original on velvet not a print but it was just inspired probably from the 70s or 80s you know when that was popular and you can tell by the frame they all had this kind of frame they all had that kind of wooden frame you could get them at flea markets or carnivals state fairs whatever um anyways black horse viking throne defender i tried to pick up on the game of thrones without saying game of thrones because again that would be a no-no but i tried to pick up on that crowd if i could in the item specifics which is so odd to me that's a different discussion but i was like when you some of the item specifics one of the defaults from ebay actually was like they have w things that we're not allowed to use so i'm like why are they down here but anyways game of thrones was in there so i'm like well i'm going to use that if you're going to put it in there yourself but anyways 68 dollars um if you like this kind of stuff please make a note to go look at sold and actives on older velvet paintings because you'll be surprised some of them only $20. I saw a Jesus giving the finger, like, I think it was $200. <laughs> I'm not sure if I understand that one, but anyways, 200 bucks. Okay. 
and this was an unusual item i'm just showing you because it was unusual um 38 dollars. they sold pretty quickly let's get this pulled up I, I didn't know what they were but when i picked them up i'm like okay is this beer pong no this is not beer pong they got some kind of weights in them so i you know searched it googled it not just ebay because when something's so unique it might not show up on ebay google it and so to pull up from other sources so it's some kind of training stacking training thing i really don't fully know but there were some some other listings so i pulled one from so the sold section that had relevancy if that's a thing if that's true and they sold pretty quickly so i think i paid 2.99 for a stack of them it's supposed to be 12 i only had 11 even and i still got 38 dollars and shipping okay I think we already did this yeah okay so we already talked about this i went over to my poshmark to show you those so again outlet malls is another good place um like i said at the beginning of this intro and for anyone new one of my sourcings besides thrift stores another way i'm thrifty thrifty as you know what is bargain racks and sell racks so this was at the outlet mall between here and denver there's a huge outlet mall too it has like coach and um levi and gab and tommy hilfiger it's just great and so sometimes i'll go up there and scrounge around in their clearance sections too okay and then one more thing that was interesting some of you helped me with this i this did take a while because i wouldn't come too much off the price so this was in a haul quite a few back and some of you helped me with it it's missing something can't remember now i think a little poopy white blouse to go underneath it but anyways dirndl maddle i don't know scandinavian austrian german oktoberfest <laughs> there it is but those little dresses and this was not a cheap costume okay different from that this was like authentic here let me show you the label see what i mean that's a nice cloth label wool super cute hidden side zipper so you know um piping little florets these let me go back oh pockets hello that is a little index card that i have over here in my supplies it's just a little index card that says pocket or pockets i stick it down and take a picture okay so these little things those little button things were metal too okay so let's get back to that so that was cute 68 dollars i think 7.99 i want to say mary cherry tree if you follow her mary mary cherry tree if you follow her on um instagram i think she's the one that helped me with that okay so those were some of the highlights it wasn't it wasn't bad um lots of hard goods so i i decided not to give up on hard goods you guys know i have a hashtag deal that i was splitting it up and my daughter was running that one and i was putting some hard goods in that one well at tax time i'm like oh my gosh now i have to, you know it's not that easy to separate shipping prices seller fees all this so now i have to do it not only you know poshmark now i have two ebay stores I kind of did it thinking that I probably went too far with this relevancy thing, thinking that, well, I want only clothing in my clothing store, but I don't think it matters, not for the type of store I have. Okay. Now, if I was selling a lot of replenishables, like say I'm selling a lot of, I don't know, iPhones or electronics, I would probably, a lot of replenishables, high competition. I might want to delve into that and kind of stick with that and have like if I started selling baby blankets maybe put it in you know baby stuff have a separate store for that but I think for the way that I operate it's not really necessary and it's just it was just more of a hassle come tax time right so I am now I'm going to stay with hard goods because I made a little chunk of money the last couple of months with my hard goods but I'm just going to keep them in mile high scene and I'll just keep my hashtag deal store as my like buying store and this is like a backup store if I ever need it or to buy things because you know 
that's a lot of us will tell you um buy from a second account probably if you are buying something that you're just not sure if things are going to go cool because some people you return things or you have to open a case and they get all mad and they try to retaliate so <laughs> it's just sometimes it's just better like to use a second account and keep your store protected um and buy from that so that's what i'll keep hashtag deal for so that's why not much is happening over there when i get a chance i'll probably go over there and grab all the pictures and pull everything down probably or just let it ride who knows okay thanks you guys i'm going to take a little break and come back and do the haul video of this rack of clothing and a bunch of hard goods that i have i've got some really cute items back there so we're going to do a little haul video, a little thrift with me, thrifting for resale. That will be, if you're watching this later, that one will go up into that playlist. This one is going to go into the what sold playlist, okay? Because some people like to watch different types of things. Some people hate hauls. They just want to be like, what sold? Just tell me what sold, okay? And then some people like haul videos. I personally do. I like haul videos too. Just especially if I haven't got to go sourcing for a while i want to watch somebody's haul video while i'm listening all right i'm gonna go have a snack and then come back later and do the haul video thank you very much i will see you guys later bye bye